Have we all? Oh my god, now that's not even working. Go on, guys. Again, it's streaming data. Are we going? Are we going to be there? Are we? Are we in business? Are we in business? Oh Go my on, guys. baby and Jesus. Yeah. We are in business. We are on YouTube. We are on Twitch. We are on Facebook. We are on Threshold.fm. I feel like we just need to start the show again. Should we start the show again? All right, look, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Coffee and Memes. Steady job and a couple extra potatoes. That's all I want. You're getting on. You're pushing 30, Slubby. You know, it's time to think about getting some ambition. Oh, I always figured I'd live a little bit longer without it. Don't forget, kid, that what you're trying to do here is to be bright and chipper and entertaining and, and intelligent and sort of glitzy. And that's funny and it's, it's, it's kind of cool and it's interesting and it's edgy and all of that. It, it puts that facade of momentary charisma on you. And if you don't play that out, you actually fail. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Coffee and Memes on Threshold.fm, on Facebook, on YouTube, on Twitch. Um, don't worry, uh, YouTube, you missed absolutely nothing. Uh, really just a disorganised mess of bollocks and turgid crap. The sort of bollocks and turgid crap that you've come to expect uh, from this uh, radio slash uh, YouTube slash video show. I'm sorry in a way, but also, um, you know, just if you can't take... The worst of me, you don't deserve this sort of 1% best of me. Uh, right, look, what have we got coming up? Uh, we uh, hunt for mysterious tiny horse with pink mane, only spotted at night. Uh, that seems like to be a riot. Man who switched beer for food during Lent loses over three stone. That's the man who decided to give up food and only drink beer. Uh, possibly going to pattern that some sort of new diet. Woman says she'll move out of the UK over intimidating telephone pole. Bit of fun. Um, Jeff Parsons of the Metro uh, says how uh, has written an entire article, which has got to be at least a thousand words, uh, entitled "How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the AirPods." Yep, that is correct. The Apple headphones, uh, the AirPods. Uh, man, seventy-four, has visited more than fifty thousand pubs. Says beer is the secret to eternal youth. Uh, keen to get into that. Uh, Lord Buckethead is going to stand for European elections. Um, uh, a, a lot of Florida man stuff, and yeah, as I did mention before, the bloody um, oh, for all the stream problems, <clears throat> big news in terms of uh, trans family versus side trans mafia. Whew, Lord, a bloody live! Um, yeah, stuff is really heating up with that. As you may remember, last Thursday, Armin van Buren uh, was playing at Wembley Stadium. I went down there with the uh, with the funky bunch with the fun boys. To, to and Jesus, it all kicked off as you can imagine. Uh, also, uh, plenty of listener mail to get through, uh, and uh, we're going to see what Ronnie Size has been up to. Right, we have a little bit of Onnelly. Onnelly is the vocalist from Represent, great vocalist, lover on stage. Oh, Ronnie, come on, seriously, man, brother, Kyle, you gotta can't be out here just dropping dropping your guts like that in the studio. Um, in terms of shoe throwers, um. What have we got? That bit by the clamps is nice. Critical impact featuring fats. That's, we might start with that. That's a really hot bit. New Kalito and Addiction. Uh, Sika and Akov. Uh, I think that should keep us going for the day. Let's have this um, oh, critical impact bit. It's on Metalheads. Really nice. Really very, very nice bit. Oh. Let me know where everyone is listening. Tell me what you're wearing. Tell me what you're doing with your laugh.
Coming up at 11, we got Parallax with Roll Call. Shiny new episode of that. We'll have you flinging all your flippy floppies. We got Mr. Merck, he's in Tallinn. Your boy Stranger's got nothing on under his clothes. Big Chode's so eating corned beef like a boss. Rob's wearing a pint t-shirt in the office in Cambridge. Squidgy Beats is wearing his Rankins Records tank top up in the big sea. Your boy Frank's in Antwerp. Will Burbage bringing the heat. Lee's eating some sort of drumstick pate. I don't know what's going on there. Some lederhosen going on. Some New Zealand crew. Gabe's listening in Cape Town. We're global as fuck. Just call me Mr. Worldwide. Don't. Please. Jesus, don't do that. Oh, God, I'd hate that. Far away. Yeah, that's Far Away by Critical Impact and, um, and DRS and Fats. Okay, nice bit of gear, that is. Nice bit of fucking way to start the day. Uh, Florida man threatens to destroy a town with his army of turtles, warning police they should never have fucked with the saint. Damn, he's arrested for shouting obscenities in the street. Yeah, that's a rough thing to get arrested for. Um, here he is. He's, uh, uh, well, no, he's he's down. Hold on. Woo, wee, woo. There he is. Yep, so he looks pretty saintly. I wouldn't fuck with this army of turtles. I feel like, did we cover this on Friday? Yeah, maybe. I mean, I don't think we got too too deep into it. Matt, uh, Thomas uh, Devaney Lane. Thomas Devaney Lane, 61, was arrested on Sunday in uh, India Atlantic, Florida. Police say they received seven calls alleging Lane was disturbing the peace. Nice. Lane reported uh, reportedly warned officers that his turtle army would destroy everyone. Uh, he was escorted to the police station and banged on the glass before leaving. Okay. Uh, Lane was arrested for a second time that day, warning, you'll see what happens in an hour before making multiple claims his turtle army would avenge him. Nice. I always wanted a turtle army. I mean, an army of any any type of animals, really. I mean, be they be there aquatic beasts or, you know, f- f- woodland creatures or farm farmyard animals might be quite good. This is a, um, an army of lambs. I don't really fuck with people. Oh, they look adorable and then door straight to the knackers. Oof. Takes have it. A man refers to it, a man who refers to himself as the Saint was arrested in Florida town on Sunday. Uh, after police say he screamed obscenities and threatened to unleash an army of turtles to destroy the community. Uh, police received multiple calls Sunday afternoon regarding a Thomas Devaney Lane, 61, for disturbing the peace at several businesses, including Starbucks, Cafe Surf in this star. And Sassy Granny Smoothies. I don't know about this Sassy Granny. She can keep her smoothies. Uh, along with the West Cre- the Wave Crest Avenue Boardwalk uh, in India Atlantic. Some weird-ass names in Florida. Upon his arrest, Lane is said to have warned officers that his turtle army would destroy everyone and wreak havoc on the local area as revenge for his apprehension. Seems reasonable. Seems like a reasonable threat to me. And I think it's one, a threat that should be heeded. Authorities escorted him back to... Um, the Indy Atlantic Police Department headquarters, where Lane reportedly pounded on the glass and walls before hastily ex- exiting the station, before a booking officer could speak to him. Right. He was later found in his car in the parking lot of the 7-Eleven, where I went to say the 61-year-old was cursing at customers as they entered and left the store. Can't have that, can you? As police approached him for a second time... Uh, Lane dialed 911 and allegedly told the operator uh, that was that the responding officers needed to leave now or they will be sorry you ever fucked with the saint. Uh. 
Uh, he then added that you would all see what happens in an hour, uh, a police affidavit claims. The document adds that Lane had to be removed from his vehicle by force. And, uh, well, the turtles aren't going to look kindly on that, are they? Police said he continued to yell indecencies at passers, uh, passers-by during the ensuing struggle and warned officers several times of the violence his turtle army would impact on them. Lane was arrested for disturbing the peace and resisting arrest without violence and misusing 911. He was booked into the Brevard County Jail and later released on bail. Um, I don't think... Uh, I, I genuinely... I don't think they should be fucking with the saint for a start. I just think, you know, let him go about his saintly business. And if his saintly business involves sitting outside a 7-Eleven and effectively chastising customers, so be it. You know, he's a saint for a reason. And I don't really think it's for us to judge his saintly business. And also, I just... I just don't like the idea of him unleashing his terrifying turtle army to come and wreak havoc on the local community and avenge his arrest. I just, I think the price, I think, I think the overall costs of fucking with the saint are too high. I'm not saying that, look, we should bow to the saint and be cucked by the saint. I'm just, I just think we should leave the saint alone. You know, just let him go about his saintly business as long as he's not actually enacting any uh, violence, any actual violence. Um, I just think, you know, leave him to go about his saintly business. Um, you know, just, oh, God bless him. Um, all right, look, what else have we got? Uh, we have a oh. little bit of Onnelly. Onnelly is the vocalist from Represent. Ronnie Great again, please. On stage. God, sorry. <laughs> this is going to go the same way of that bloody, where is he? <laughs> it just comes on a random bits. Just poor Ronnie just dropping his guts. Um, anyway, Manny switched beer for food during Lent. Uh, loses over three stone. Um, God bless him, of course. Uh, he's just giving stuff up for Lent. Uh, remember Del Hall, no? Well, what about if you, we asked you to remember the guy who gave up food for Lent and adopted a beer-only diet? Ringing the bell now. Yes, I remember it. I threatened to read it out once. It actually didn't. Uh, well, we're back with an update because his boozy mission is done and he didn't crumble once. And now he's £44 lighter for it. That's wild. Um, Dell, who works at 50 West Brewing Company in Cincinnati, Ohio, has drunk exclusively from an assortment of beers for 46 days, a plan which was inspired by the fasting rituals of the 18th century uh, Bavarian monks. They sound like a hoot. Surely you'd be pissed by lunch with all that booze on an empty stomach. Uh, now it's all come to an end, he's been able to compare, compare his before and after health and has only seen improvements. Uh, as if we weren't already jealous of his lifestyle choices. Speaking to the Lad Bible, Dell said... Sorry, here he is. Look at him. Yeah, this is probably him at the beginning. Uh, he's a sort of a rotund gentleman. Um, sort of semi-goatee. I mean, it's not a full goatee, clearly. Uh, but, you know, he's nevertheless, he's getting it done. Uh, where are we? Uh, speaking to the Lad Bible, Dell said, I'm feeling great. I went from 292 pounds to 248 pounds. I've lost 44 pounds. Uh, not a single cheat. I plan to continue to lose weight uh, through a protocol of intermittent fasting and portion control. That seems like a more reasonable way to lose weight. Um, you know, if you are quite rotund, then you can get away with this sort of madness because basically your body just eats its fat reserves. That's what they're there for. Um, although probably would do you some favours to have some actual nutrition. I believe beer is pretty much devoid of nutrients. Um, but, you know, I guess... Uh, well, I mean, yeah, worked. Um, but he did, assume, uh, he did assure me that he would continue to drink beer as it is always part of his diet plan. Good lad. Uh, you know, being his job and everything, it's all right for some, isn't it? I like lad Bible journalists aren't fucking shit-faced the morning, noon and night. You'd have to be to... <sighs> I mean, Jesus, I mean, they're pretty much driving me to booze. I'll just have to swallow the mouthwash in the morning. Just hope that'll get me through till lunch. Um, you might be wondering what his first meal choice was. Well, uh, he didn't mess around. Uh, I had bone broth last night at midnight, but it wasn't very good. Oh, that's a shame. Bone broth is delicious. Uh, so I was with a group of beer reps, and I had a very small portion of guacamole, and it was heaven. <laughs> oh, lovely stuff. Dallas, however, totally craving sushi. Story of my life. 
uh, and speaking about his health improvements, he said, my cholesterol went down, my blood pressure went down, and my sh- blood sugar went down. All improvements. Yep, they are all symptomatic of losing weight. Uh, Dell started the challenge on Ash Wednesday, 6th of March, and within days, he had shed over 15 pounds. Speaking on his YouTube channel, uh, he said, I'm currently down 15.6 pounds already. This is crazy. This isn't about weight loss. It's about my journey and about breaking an addiction to food and about trying to challenge myself and replicate what the monks did. <laughs> yeah, and have a few, have a few cool, crisp, delicious pints <laughs> along the way. I'm having anywhere from between two and five beers a day. I'm not necessarily drinking in the morning. I'm not a breakfast person. So I get up, have some water, have a black coffee, no sweetener, no dairy, nothing in it, just black coffee. I normally have my first beer sometime in the afternoon. And I might have one uh, whenever I'm feeling a bit peckish. The majority of the beers I'm drinking are at home. When I get home at night, I might have two or three beers at the house. And that's pretty much a typical day. Uh, Is anyone else loving this weather but feeling they should uh, have laid off the commitment to... Winter warmth. Maybe now is the time to introduce this way of living. And let's face it, it's not like your social life would be impaired. Well, it's an interesting way of going about going about your your business and uh, losing a few quid in the process. Uh, good work, buddy. I think um, you. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend this uh, to anyone as a way to lose weight. I mean, it sort of depends. Really, really depends on like what your fitness goals are, what your what your what your body goals are, whether or not you're looking to maintain your muscle mass while losing uh, body fat in a safe and controlled way, which you can sustain then with a more healthy relationship with food. At the end of your process, and that immediately just pile the pounds back on it. Um, so yeah. Anyway. Oh. <laughs> right, we have a little bit of Onnelly. Onnelly is the vocalist from Represent. Great vocalist, level on stage. Oh my lord of bloody mercy. Um, right, look, let's have another one, and then we're going to get into this trance family story, because it's a long one. And uh, yeah, there's a lot to get. There's a, a lot to cover on it. Uh, so let's have this. It's oh, it's a bit. It's a bit. It's, oh, it's a bit spicy. Uh, you want it by Act of. You want it. 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 Uh, the build recommending a diet of speed. Yep. There are plenty of unhealthy ways to lose weight. <laughs> that are very effective. Big Tommy's on Facebook. But morning to you, mate. Just retire, cause this is what you desire, you want it. You want it. Big Andrew Howes in the house on Facebook. It's uh, it's only 10.26 in the morning. He's almost certainly on a cocktail of street drugs, though. Mitten, I don't know what the touch is, but I think it's very unlikely to be better than turbulence. Hey, roll up, roll up and take that weight off your 
Brothers gotta start acting like grown-ups and get your ass to that sofa. I might be stoned, but no stoner. Lone wolf, but never a loner. I'm sweet like lime and Corona. You're stealing bars, man. Just own up. Fire, fire, it's getting lit like a lighter. Look in the eye of the tiger. I see your eyes getting wider. I'm sweet like honey inside You got some skills to require. You might as well just retire, cause this is what you desire. You want it. If you want it. If you want it. If you want it. Uh, apparently Andrew's double dropped two Mitsus and washed them down with coffee. He doesn't fuck about. Everybody wanna get that love. Everybody wanna get the brain fucked up. Everybody wanna get the money in the bank, but when they got a move, then they don't wanna bosh. Every man wanna get that love. Everybody wanna get the brain fucked up. Everybody wanna get the money in the bank, but when they got a move, then they don't wanna bosh. Everybody wanna get that love. Everybody wanna get the brain fucked up. Everybody wanna get the money in the bank, but when they got a move, then they don't wanna bosh. Every man wanna get that love. Everybody wanna get the brain fucked up. Everybody wanna get the money in the bank, but when they got a move, then they don't wanna bosh. Roll up, roll up. Yeah. Up your shoulders, start to start. This is a good bet. As well, just retire because this is what you desire. You want it, you want it. <laughs> Andrew saying he showed the round record special last night to a few friends. I wonder whether or not he was fast forwarding to the bits where he gets mentioned. <laughs> That's what I'd do. <laughs> Uh, uh, that is uh, You Want It by Akov. It's on Eat Brain uh, featuring Multiplex and Urso. Uh, I like that. That's fun bit gear. Fun bit gear. Anyway, as you know, as well, any new listeners to the show will not know, but a little bit of backstory is that uh, I go to a co-working space in London uh, sometimes because it's got uh, Windows and other people. Uh, you know, just do my emails and that. And anyway, a lot of the other uh, DJs, particularly EDM DJs, trance DJs and that, they're, they're always there. And anyway, they're always getting into scrapes. And as it turns out, there's been a sort of bubbling war a sort of underground war uh, that is eventually going to spill out onto the streets uh, between the trance family, Tiesto, Armin, Armin Van Buren, and Martin Garrix, uh, versus the Psytrance Mafia, a sort of shadowy collective of wooks uh, that pff, basically it's, it's, it's just become all-out war between the two of them, and it's going to spill out onto the streets, and it's almost certainly going to spill a lot of good gear. So... I've been sort of documenting it on the show, and um, last Thursday, uh, you might remember, Armin Van Buren uh, was playing at Wembley Stadium, big trance family do, and uh, as you may also remember, on Friday morning, I was somewhat hungover. Now, those two things are not a coincidence. Uh, I wasn't going to go down, um, because I was at the co-working space, uh, just trying to get get through some emails, and uh, the fun boys were there, Van Buren. Tiesto, Garrix, uh, they were and they were there pre-gaming before the show. Anyway, I was sat in the snug area, which is kind of a little bit off to the side. It's kind of like a little room. It's got sofas and that open fire. It's nice. Anyway, I'm in there trying to do some emails, sipping on a pint of lager top, and hear a sort of thundering applause <sighs> coming towards me. So I was like, oh god, here we go. Garrix is coming over. Anyway, Martin Garrix comes bounding over into the snug, and he's got a sort of football scarf in his mouth uh and i said oh oh is that for me is that for me uh, and he sort of nods i pat him on the head a little stroke and uh i try and get it try and get it out of his mouth and he's like, I'm like look oi, give it come out here oi drop it drop, I was like, look, if it's for me you have to let go you have to let he's like, i'm trying to pull it out of his out of his mouth and i had to get like Two of my fingers, like into actually into his mouth, and just sort of prise it. I'm like, ah, and get it, get it out. And he's like, <laughs> very pleased with himself. Uh, sort of look at it. It's a football scarf, but it says Trance Family on it. I was like, all oh, right, okay. And um, anyway, uh, he says, 
Oh, Mr. Rankin, that, like, oh, it's, uh, it's for you, Mr. Rankin, that, like, his trans family scarf and that. And, you oh, it's for you and that, Dad. Are you coming down and that? Are you coming to the show? Are you, because I'm in proper nervous and that, like, you know, after last week where, like, all them, all the wooks were, like, trying to make him do gear and that. And he shit himself and that. He's, he's got shook and that. You know, and, and like, and he just does, like, a little fart. And uh, it's like, oh, sorry, Mr. Rankin, you know, like, you get nervy and that, you know me, dicky tummy. Like, yes, yes, I know, Garrett, you know, you, you know, you're a good boy. Give me a little little stroke on the head. Um, Ah, oh, Mr. Rankin, are you, are you coming down? Are you going to come to the gigs and gig and that, like? So now I'm getting roped into this. <laughs> so listen, Garrett, so I'm going to be doing emails. Look, I, I, can, I can't be bloody scarf waving at, uh, uh, to trance all night. So I go, oh, just come down for a bit and that, like, because, uh, you know, when just when he gets on, he'll be fine and that, but he's just shook from all them wooks and that when he made him shat himself, like, the other week and that. <laughs> he does another little guff. All right. All right. When are you going? When are you going? Oh, I'm getting picked up in the middle of the lake outside, and you know, and Mr. Rankin, you know, can come with us in the car. All right, all right fine, let's go. And anyway, I want to get out of the snug because Garrick's, Garrick's guffs, they're sort of starting to set in. So <laughs> i got to get out of there. It's starting to get a bit eye watering. Anyway, he's off. He's <laughs> thundering out. Out, out of the front. So I follow him outside. And anyway, there's a red Fiat Panda out there. It's got to be at least 25 years old. It's waiting outside. The passenger door opens. And the front seat, front passenger seat sort of flaps down. Anyway, Tiesto sticks his head out the window. He's like, oh shit, it's London's gayest dubstep DJ. Coming to learn a trick or two from the Tranche family? Yep, maybe you can learn a few mixy tricks on the ones and twos. <laughs> a few mixy tricks on the ones and the twos. Uh, maybe you could even try. You could even try them out next time they book you for DMZ. Probably be a get G A Y, won't it? If you know what I mean. Am I right? I just sort of shake my head and jump in the back. Anyway, Garrix hops in and just sort of sits on my lap and sort of curls up. Van Buren gets into the passenger seat and his absolute unit of a man gets uh, gets into the driver's seat. He's wearing a lot of black. He's got his hood up. And anyway, Van Buren pops in a cons- cassette tape of Sasha and Digweed, Northern Exposure. We tear off at high speeds uh, in the direction of Wembley. So I say, oi, Van Buren, who's the, f- who's the fridge driving the Panda? And he says, uh, yeah, new, new security guard ranking. Uh, Tote's not going to take any chances, you know, after that bloody run-in with the bloody Psytrance Mafia. Those works are absolute trouble. I say, oh, good plan, better to be safe than sorry, just sort of pretending not to care. Anyway, we pull up out the back of Wembley Stadium, and at this point, oh, there's a dreadful smell of BO in the car. Oh, God, it's absolutely eye-watering. I'm not sure if it's me. I'm not sure if it's Tiesto, so I just don't mention it. I'm guessing everybody's sort of thinking the same thing. Anyway, we go through the backstage, like, green room bit, and sit down. One thing I will say about the trans family, yeah, they know how to put on a spread backstage. They know how to, they know how to do a rider. Jesus. Tell you what, I don't mess around. So anyway, Van Van Buren's rider is as follows. Ten jammy dodgers, ten Jaffa cakes, ten party rings, ten uh, ten bourbons, ten pink wafers, ten custard creams, Uh, one pack of Bonios, presumably for Garrick's, uh, one, uh, two bottles of Iron Brew, two bottles of Tizer, one bottle of Lilt, two bottles of original flavoured Lucasade, cheese and pineapple skewers, so that's nice. Uh, cheese and pineapple skewers. Mini pork pies. Uh, cheese sandwiches cut into triangles, crust cut off. Dairy Lee triangles. And five grams of nose bag. Uh, so I get cracking into the biscuits and the mini pork pies. I'm about three lager tops in at this point and I haven't had any dinner. So I need to get some sort of semblance, some sort of semblance of a meal in before I keep drinking. Otherwise, it's just going to be chaos. Tiesto starts racking up the wanger. And uh, Garrick starts tucking into his bonios. Uh, Van Buren's just sort of hanging at the back, and he's just sipping a bottle of water. He sat down. He just sat down there by his absolute unit, uh, and his bodyguard's giving him the water. He looks pretty nervous, but you know it's a big gig and that, so it's sort of understandable. Anyway, the smell of the bo from the car has sort of followed us in there, and it, it's just oh. So I have a little little waft of my. Oh, it's not me. I just smell of the Lynx Africa that I applied in the morning. And at lunch and in the afternoon. And then I have a little go wander over to where Tiesto is just 
furiously racking up the chop. Really? Oh, really? Giving it. It's got a note out. Top cow. It's really going at it. Um, I sort of take a little bit of a sniff near him just to, um, just so sort of I can get away with, you know, he'll think that I'm just, you know, referencing the gear and that. And he just smells a pound shop brute. No, no, nothing there. Nothing too bad there. And he goes, Oh, will show you want a slug of the good stuff, do you? B- uh, bro, step butt munch. Yeah, the tranche family gear that put your tits in a twist. I was like, well, look, I'm all right, actually. I'm three lager tops in at this point. I've got, you know, I've got the show in the morning and I don't need dinner. And, you know, if I get on the nose coffee now, I mean, I'm not going to have any dinner. And, you know, then things will go sideways pretty quickly. And look, if I have to look after you bunch of main room pansies and the bloody side trance mafia show up, you know, things that it's just, just going to be bad news if I'm already three bloody slugs to the wind. It's chaos. Tiesto says, you chat a lot of breeze ranking. I've never heard so much air pie, even from a dubstepper. And that's saying a lot. Uh, at this point, anyway, the dressing room door opens and one of the stagehands comes in and says, Van Buren, you're on in the three minutes. Dutch stagehand, apparently. Uh, he looks all flustered, his butt downs his bottle of, bottle of water. The bodyguard gets another bottle, gives it straight to him, downs that one. Um, so I say, Listen, Buren, you need to go for a piss, mate. That's that's bad news. And he's like, don't worry, rankers. I've got an actual blood as a steel, mate. He's like, well, listen, you may remember last week when you sharted yourself. Uh, you probably don't. You think, go for a piss, mate. He's like, All right, okay, yeah, sure. Better to be safe than sorry, yeah? So anyway, he goes for a piss. Um, he's, uh, anyway, as he runs past me, I get to have a quick... Uh, there's still quite a lot of this story left. Uh, <laughs> I try to have a little sniff on him. Absolutely fine. He smells of um, pound shop brute as well. Um, but so I sort of wander over to buy where this bouncer is. He's enormous, weird looking. But as I get closer, oh my eyeballs start to water, and oh, oh, it's the bo. It's him. Oh man, it's it's absolutely horrendous. It's really, really very bad. Um, something weird about him. I can't put my finger on it. Anyway, Ar- Armin van Buren returns from the bog. It says, good solid stream there, no issues. Yep, yep, yep. Feel a bit bit dicky tummy. Um, but probably just the nerves, you know. Let's um let's rock some rock out some trance to a stadium full of trance music fans. Yeah. So anyway, he dashes out there. Uh, a few seconds later, you hear the crowd just go completely crazy. I look around, there's a wall of monitors, like showing all the different sort of camera angles and stuff for um inside the stadium. And phew, there's gotta be twenty five thousand people in there all hands in the air, praising the trance legend, Armin van Buren. So I think to myself, what an absolute bunch of twats. Just what a bunch of twats. But then, like, just, you know, I'm starting to you know, get into it, bob my head, two or three records in, people are going nuts. But looking at Armin, he looks a bit pale. He looks a bit, he looks quite sweaty and quite pasty. Something's going wrong. He also, he looks a little bit panicky. Anyway, he fades in the next record, Barber's Adagio for Strings. You know, and it's got the whole sort of sad, sad breakdown bit, you know, and then it's sort of going into the into the build up. And you can see they've got enormous like TV screens behind him that are sort of showing like they, they keep cutting the shots and some of the shots are like behind him. So you can see the whole crowd, but you can see like the back of him and everything. And anyway, it's building up and it's building up. And uh, I hear a sort of um, sort of sniggering coming from the bodyguard. So I look at him and I was like, what's up with you laughing, boy? And he's just sniggering and sniggering. And I get right over to him. And I'm like, what are you laughing at? And he pushes me. I'm like, oh, what the fuck? So I push him back. And as I push him back, I realise it's not a person, but multiple people. It's a load of bloody wooks all clinging on to each other to make like a bigger sort of human-shaped figure and it's the bloody Psytrance Mafia all sat on each other's shoulders and stuff making this sort of giant sort of super work uh, dressed up as a bouncer anyways pissing himself laughing at this tro- at this point and um, I look round and uh, as I do the main work's like don't fuck with the trans tra- uh, don't fuck with the Psytrance Mafia and Van Buren's got his hands in the air and just as the track drops ah. Oh, he drops his guts and he just sharts himself in the most oh absolutely outrageous way. He completely fills his French connection chi- white French connection chinos with just hot 
Todd. And it's just, you can see it's streaming down his legs. Oh, it's coming out of the bottom. You know, it's filling up the turnips in his, uh, in his, oh, God, and he's going all over the bloody stage. So I realised what's happened. The Wooks had dosed him with some sort of laxative in the bottles of water that they were giving him. Oh, it's all over the stage. There were a load of stage hands have rushed on to try and help. They're slipping over. Oh, God, it looks like a fucking trance remix of Two Girls, One Cup. It's absolutely horrendous. I look round at the side trance mafia, and they're all just sort of like, they're all like disappearing like up into air vents and like through keyholes and like all over the place. It's completely insane. But Van Buren, he's still going at it. He's still DJing. He's like, the show must go on. And I'm, you know, I'm, in, I'm impressed by it. But, you know, it's just, it's absolute chaos up there. Um, I look round. Garrix has sharted himself as well. Just obviously, you know what he's like. He's a sensitive soul. Uh, Tiesto hasn't even noticed what's going on. He's still just racking up the chop. And, you know, I'm just giving it, giving it all of that. So I just think, fuck this, I'm out of here. I'll go over to the mini fridge, grab the six Desperados that are in there, a couple of the mini pork pies, and call an Uber. Apparently, Van Buren played for another two hours with his pants all full of poo. Um, you know, God bless him, he's a man after my own heart. But I'm impressed. I think he's, uh, he's dedicated to the trance. You know, it really is a way of life for him. And as much as I don't agree with his lifestyle choices, I, I, respect, his, uh, I respect his right to have them uh, as long as he's not hurting anyone else. Uh, so there's probably going to be some sort of debriefing, I guess, later today or tomorrow at the co-working space. And, uh, you know, I would imagine they're going to be plotting some sort of revenge. But, man, these, this shadowy Psytrance mafia, I mean, they stink, but pff, they're dangerous. They are dangerous, so we'll see what happens, guys. I'll keep you updated. Uh, this is uh, Sicker. It's called Strange. It's off the Fearsome EP. Fun little bit, this. Be interested to know how people listening are falling, like uh, in terms of picking a side, trance family or side trance mafia. Of course, my, I mean, it's not something I even want to be involved with, but of course, I've got to take the side of the fun boys. I'm taking Garrick's for a walk later, so we'll get his side of the story. walk down your street and pass as a human, but you would probably look at me and, and feel there was something strange about me. Strange. Fun bit. Something strange. Something strange. my world, I do have a physical body, though it exists in a slightly different dimension. I could walk down your street and pass as a human, but you would probably look at me and, and feel there was something strange about me. Uh, 
Weather Strange by Sika uh, off the first EP. Uh, it's on Audio Addict Records. It's quite a fun little bit, that. Uh, yep, Strange by Sicker. Anyway, it's time for Listener Mail. Send me any bollocks that you have on your mind. Send me any bollocks that you can find. Even if that bollocks that you have on your brain is totally fucking insane. No, thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, God. <laughs> Uh, uh, right, I'll get rid of him. There he goes. Uh, right, hello. Welcome to Listener Mail, uh, the segment in which you send me any bollocks that you have on your brain, uh, even if it's totally insane. Email it to will at threshold.fm. Uh, you just Honestly, any absolute madness that comes into your head, uh, people are certainly following that brief, uh, as you will see today. Um, first is from Josh LV. He says, Rankin, you lobster-loving bastard. I was hoping you could shed some light on the ferocious heat uh, that Ragged Twins have been throwing at seemingly everyone in the DMB world recently. Seems every time I scroll through Instagram lately, Ragged Twins have posted a fresh meme tagged, uh, targeted at various DMB artists. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, maybe you could give us the inside track, given your eclectic knowledge of all uh, DMB related beefs. I see screenshots attached. Uh, live long and lobster josh elvey uh yes i will point out i am not a, an expert in drum and bass beefs uh, but i am an enthusiast uh so the uh, look i will um, i'm afraid uh, i did look into this and i'm s sorry to say it's not as exciting um as it does initially appear uh, to be um okay so let's get some of the memes up that they've been making here's the first one uh which is it's Ian Beale as a tramp, which is a good way to start any meme, really. And it says, when jungle warriors destroy you in the clash and you ain't got another booking for 10 years, uh, you knew it was the wrong move. Uh, that's the first one uh, there. And then the second here it is a... Um, it's like a sort of funeral um, card... You know the cars you get at funerals. Anyway, it says, In loving memory of dub shotters, serial killers, born on road, and shadow demon, uh, all junglist, you are invited to the funeral uh, of the above cruise on the 18th of the 4th, 19 at Printworks. Uh, please arrive early. Burial commences at 9pm. Order of service will be conducted by Jungle Warriors. Thank you in advance for your attendance. Uh, and then the third one is... A sort of Fisher Price uh, vinyl player with some of the um, uh, it's a Sesame Street one actually Sesame Street vinyl player with some sort of plastic discs which presumably play some sort of tunes. Anyway, it says Voltage Dub Selection leaked. Um, now, what is actually going on here is they uh, have a sound clash, which is where lots of different crews get together uh, on either one or various sound systems, and then depending on the rule set, sometimes go like set for set and uh, the crowd get to decide which ones they like the most or they get they make special dub plates dissing the other crews and they can go like tune for tune and then either the crowd decides or sometimes i think they do have judges it originates from sort of jamaican sound system culture uh, rodigan big into it and um yeah anyway they've got a sound clash at print work so it is customary before sound clashes to rinse your opponents as much as possible uh, but it's all light-hearted good fun and they're all actually friends so they're not it's not actually real beef uh, i mean i guess in some uh, some sound systems uh, probably do have real beef but i believe in this case my expert opinion and i could be wrong is that uh, it is uh, just light-hearted uh, fun uh, for for hijinks and skullduggery hype up the show is the show uh, it is when did it say it was on the um on the 18th. Oh, so it was last Thursday. It's already been. I wonder who won. I did look at it. There is, uh, yeah, it was at Printworks. Uh, it actually had the rules listed out on, you can see it on Rag and Tw Ragga Twins's uh, Instagram account, but it sounded quite cool. It was, like, it was like 20 minute sets. There were three or four sound systems, 20 minute sets each, and then they were going to go like dub plate for dub plate. So there would be like dubs cussing each other out. Um, and you get like famous, uh, famous people to redo their tracks. 
in dub plate style cussing the other people. The um the Red Bull sound clashes were really, really good. There was one with uh shy effects and chasing status and rodigan i was actually supposed to like shy effects rang me some name dropping here lobsters uh shy effects rang me up and i was supposed to help them write some uh stuff some comedy stuff for it but i was in berlin at the time it didn't really work out i didn't really understand quite what it was for and then i remember watching it and being like well this is the biggest event of the year I should have, should, have, should have really forced myself to be involved with that i was like what is write some uh, yeah, it was confusing. Anyway, shame to have missed out on that. That would have been fun. Um, yeah, their their team just absolutely mopped up. It was them versus ASAP Rocky, uh, Stone Love Sound System, and a, f- a few others. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Anyway, uh, thanks for that, Josh. Uh, well spotted, although sadly, um, uh, friendly fire. So what are you going to do? Uh, okay, Aid, Aid. Um, who reviews hotels for no good reason um, has uh, sent us another review. He says, "Easy ranking. Hope you're feeling better." Uh, we missed you yesterday I think this was sent last Wednesday um, or last Thursday we missed you yesterday with no one to help us through the drudgery of Wednesday morning uh, working away from home I uh, thought I'd send you another message uh, since you invite utter bollocks from people it's true I do I've signed my own death warrant with it uh, this week's hotels uh, have generally been uh, pretty shit for various reasons uh, the usual lack of body products shit breakers uncomfortable beds and overpriced rooms not that we care about it the company's paying uh, but I just wanted to give an honourable mention to the excellent George Inn in Braunton, Devon, uh, which nailed everything perfectly. That's nice, isn't it? Uh, as you can see from the photos attached, and I have checked them out, and they do confirm the following. A power shower with excellent pumping power, extremely comfortable beds, a great selection of room condiments, and even a decent telly, not some crappy Alba rubbish, and an excellent breakfast of boot. And to cap it all off, the icing on the veritable cake uh, were Gideon Bibles in every room. So that is a lovely touch, isn't it? And all for the paltry sum of £53 a night. Good show, the George Inn, we salute you. Anyway, I'll stop bothering you now. Big ups for the show as usual. It's like a ray of sunshine in the morning in an otherwise bleak existence of motorway miles. Thank you, aid. Cheers, mate. Thanks for getting in touch. That's very decent of you. God, we're nearly at the end of the show now. Uh, anyway, I think we have time for one more, and then we'll save Sean's for tomorrow. Um, Romain, he says, Hi, Will. I was listening to Russell Brand on the Rogan podcast. Uh, what do you think about that guy? Uh, the more I kept listening to him, the more I kept thinking, God, this guy is such a fruit, ranting and raving about BJJ, openly discussing men's mental health, finding meaning in taking on responsibility for his family. Oh, yeah, I wonder who that sounds like. Um, uh, I'm not saying, however, that I wouldn't let him be the Eurostar to my channel tunnel. Right, pinching your claws uh, with love, uh, the brotherly kind. Uh, don't give you, don't give your hopes up, Romain. Uh, yeah, I'd listen to the brand, Russell Brand Project, Russell Brand's last Brogan podcast. I thought it was really good. Uh, I like Russell Brand most of the time. Sometimes he is insane, um, but a lot of the time I think he, I think he's very good. And uh, yeah, obviously I'm totes gay for Rogan. I'll probably shag Brand as well, just for pub points. And uh, yeah, I condone the following, ranting and raving about BJJ, openly discussing men's mental health and finding meaning in taking on responsibility for family. That all seems reasonable to me. So uh, Chode unsurprisingly thinks Brand is a bellend. That doesn't surprise me whatsoever. Um, you know, I'm not in love with him, but you know, I think he's... Uh, I think he's fine. I think he did used to be hilarious in terms of stand-up. I think his uh, political thing was very ill-advised. Very ill-advised. Um, and I think a lot of the time I'm laughing at him rather than with him. But, you know, God bless him. God bless him. And he's a three-stripe white belt now, so um, can't argue with that. It would be quite funny to roll with Brand. I think I should, um, I think I'd enjoy leg locking him a lot. <laughs> uh, that's the spirit. Uh, right, listen, guys. End of the show, basically. Uh, worth shouting out the VIP list as ever. Um, this is a group of fine, fine lobos that are uh, donating money to keep this station going and keep this show on every day. Uh, and I'm eternally grateful for their support, both financially and morally. Um, if you want to support the station, you get a lot of fantastic benefits. A, you get your name read out at the end of every coffee and memes. Uh, B, you get your name on the website in the VIP list. C, you'll have your name in the founders list on the new app when that comes out. That is apparently five weeks away, according to the uh, developers. So fingers crossed on that one. Uh, D, you get five quid to spend in the merch store every month. And then you can let that rack up. Uh, You also get other stuff as well that I can't remember off the top of my head. Oh, yeah, you get a pack of stickers sent to you. 
So that's a bit of fun. Um, various other business, you know, if you support for more for more than ten bucks a month, I think you you get a discount on on stuff. And if you're supporting for loads, you get guest list for everything. Uh, if you really go in, uh, I'll do a, an hour long Skype call, talk about your life every month. Maybe give you feedback on your tunes, help you out with stuff, whatever I can do to help. It's all there. If you just go to threshold.fm and go to the donate, all the information you could ever need on the subject is right there. And so I would like to uh, thank you to Oliver Hooper, Nicholas Gonclaus, Tom Ryan, Reese Moss and Squidgy Beats Parsons, Paulie Hutton, Kieran R, Michael Kozitsky, Matthew Tonkins, Dave Long, Joel Potter, Cole Murphy, Sam Howard, Tony J, Richard Patterson, Jack Murphy, Tom Cam, Stephen Harris, Matthew Bull, Zara Pickle, Jerome Van Thunderbutt, Mike Pye, Anthony Walker, Lily Ansar, Richard Franks, Thomas Hall, Cho Ryder, Andrew Heischelbeck, John Finnison, BDR Crew, Peter Blatchfield, Austin Grief, Cooper, Gendry Lightfield, Brian Glazer, James Perry, Dave Thompson, Hendo Bartende, Lady Squiff, until Liam the Menace Underwood, Dan Fucking Morris, a guy with no STDs, Justin Mercer, Ames MC, Josh Williams, Rob Humphrey, Shibby T, Coco Go Shiva, Dan Elton, Tyron Wilmore, Mr. Pope, Doc Progressive Side Trans is actually superior to drum bass, Nicholas Lawsey, Damon Rain and Chris Brakes, The Bill, Carissa Barselston, uh, Odin Bates, Lee Fuller D, Daniel Jeremy, Flaxis, Alexander Cassidy, Matt Wright, Dylan Laws, Grant Sullivan, not that Tom Robinson, subscribe on YouTube, Greg Cornford, Grace Sellers, Dad Smasher, Connor Smythe, Kevin Kaiser, Chris Shaw, Mr. Happy, the German trans overlord of DB, Ranky makes uplifting vocal side trans under the alias Cosmic Waft, keep your cool tool in the motor pool and don't let your meat loaf, and Nick Brock. A fine bunch of you. Oh, Cho saying you would donate to a GoFundMe for a Rankin versus Brand uh, Jiu Jitsu match. That would be money well spent. I would enjoy that. I would enjoy that a lot. God, imagine imagine if I really fucked up and got tapped out by Brand, though. That would be terrible. Oh, dear. My standing as an alpha male would just go through the fucking floor. Jesus Christ. Anyway, coming up now at 11 o'clock. Roll Call with Parallaxed. If you're listening on Facebook or YouTube, get over to Threshold.fm and listen there. Listen on the Android app or on the iPhone app or on the bloody... or on the standard like PewDiePie. Listen to Luai. YouTube's favourite show. That was a terrible Pe- PewDiePie impression. I can do much better than that. Uh, yeah, subscribe to Pewds. Um, yeah, no, go over to Threshold.fm. Uh, you can, you know, listen to it there. It's really good. It plays really good records, right, basically. That's the long and the short of it. Anyway, look, I love you. Um, uh, probably a little bit too much. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow at 10. Love you. Bye. Bye. Bye.